else there with you? No, it's just me. And so, are you a guitarist, a vocalist, a drummer? A, yeah. All? I am. Uh, I'm the guitarist and vocalist. I'm the lead guitarist and, and lead vocalist. Uh, my name's Johnny. Uh, we have a uh, we have another guitarist who is a, and also a background vocalist um, named Justin Sanford. Um, we have a bass guitarist, George Scott. Uh, he does our screams and a uh, drummer, uh, Marcus Janamore, who is also a background vocalist. So okay. yeah, we all sing and um, but those are the guys in the band. Okay, so what's your vintage? When did you get started? When did we get started? Yeah, when when did you form? Oh geez. Um well I mean we uh three of us knew each other in high school. And, uh, you know, I would say about 10 years ago, it, we started here? Hold on, first of all. Yeah, this... we're, yes, we're, we're recording. <laughs> okay, it, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll uh, edit it and make it different, you know, and make it sound real, as good as possible. Yeah. But No, no, it's cool. I'm just making sure, because, I mean, there's abbreviated version and there's the longer version. And, and, and the version is that, like, you know, we're four guys. Um, you know, it originally was my friend James and I, James Watson. Uh, you know, we were best friends growing up, and uh, you know, we we had just. Uh, my father has been a musician, and uh, my father got me into music, and I got James into music, and pretty soon, you know, it's just like, hey, we're musicians, and we make songs and stuff. <laughs> uh, but as far as getting the other two guys in the band, uh, it was like people from my high school that I never really talked to, and I like them. Okay. And uh, it was just an interesting thing because we were all from separate areas, like separate cliques. Yes, and, oh, uh, yes, worlds colliding. Yeah, yeah, it was very weird. But uh, but James did leave the band, and we had Justin come in. Justin Sanford, he is now the, the second guitarist and background vocalist. And, uh, and he's like a real big gear guy, so we always joke around and say, like, if there was like a, like a mechanics class or something, you would be taking that. But, yeah, but that's a, that was 10 years ago, and... Uh, it really just started after high, after high school. We were like, listen, uh, you know, I want to make some music, and uh, we all got together, and it's pretty weird how stuff takes off. You put out some music, and then people respond to it, and they're like, hey, we love your sound, and we're like, we have a sound? <laughs> you certainly <laughs> do. I love it, too. I got I got a couple songs. Uh, the video where the, uh, it opens with, it looks like you guys are doing a dual guitar attack, you and the other guitarist. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, and then you start singing about after one bar or two bars. And uh, that's, that's a strong, strong video, but the song is fantastic. And, Thank you. Uh, I also got Is Anyone In There. Another music, musicality and melody-wise, it's just, yeah, I understand that, that you have a sound, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody tries to break you soon. Hey, Before someone be else great. does. Yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> then you can actually make money still in the music business. <laughs> but very, very yeah. it's, it's gotten, a, gotten a lot less possible, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely getting, uh, it's definitely getting harder. And, and you, know, you, you see a lot of different uh, ways that artists are reaching out for income. And it's, uh, especially in these hard times, you, know, you got to support who you can. And a lot of people are canceled their tours and stuff. So... Uh, oh, I've God. tried to go out and, and reach out and support my bands that I like, that I listen to, um, and I, you know, I'll buy a t-shirt from them and whatever. Yes, uh, we have the same policy here. We we don't uh, we practice what we preach. Where we we are on a crusade to bring money money back to the to the uh, rock and roll world, and right. and so what. Our, you know, we we raise money, started the foundation. We're gonna hope it throws throws off enough interest to get payrolls for certain people who are just really. The goal is not to make you know rock stars rich just for that their own sake, but 
they should be able to have just one job, <laughs> you know? That's for sure. I mean, they it's should it, be yeah. able to be focused on the music and not have to go to, you know, the, the pizza joint after, after band practice. Yeah, and it's not even that. I mean, it's just, I mean, there's obviously everybody in our band, we have, uh, everyone's got their own job. You know, I run my own company. Uh, Justin is a machinist. Wow. Guys have to be doing something uh, to, <laughs> they got to do something to, to get the normal income that uh, basic, you know, somebody would if they had a nine to five. Right. I understand. I hear that from everybody. Even some some people that would you would be surprised are moonlighting or whatever. Uh, yeah. you're, earlier, I asked you a question just on a tangent. What what kind of business do you operate and own? Oh, what kind of business do I operate? Uh, so, my personal business. Um, I, I run a. Uh, <laughs> it's a like multi multimedia business where I do like videography, websites, a whole bunch of stuff, uh, photography, and it really started out by lack of uh, funds for Neverwake, you know, like, you're like, okay, we can't get this done, uh, how can we do it ourselves, you know, we can't pay somebody $5,000 to get this done, so how can we do it ourselves, so from college, I really, like, built myself up on how to do several different things, so um, you know, we get to now, and I actually produce a lot of our music videos now. I record a lot of our music videos. I ask people to, you know, come in and handle a camera, but, you know, we'll, we'll do the editing in-house, and it's pretty cool because we get to, have, like, be in control of the creative process mm -hmm. of, like, the entire thing instead of going, well, it's up to this director to make it happen. So... Uh, yeah, then the uh, director suddenly has you flying... In the video. Yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. With your guitars or something. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a one of our one of our music videos. We had one of the directors uh, made me wear a white shirt, and I straight up looked at the other guys and I and I was like, guys, I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I wore a white shirt. And this is like, this is the weirdest thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is weird. Uh, you know, they're artists too, I guess, and they're trying to, any yeah. opportunity to, to express and, and you know, reach reach people in that way, I guess, is what they want to yeah. do. Um, do, you, do, you, do you enjoy that work? Oh, love it. I definitely love it. And, and like I mentioned, you know, we get to be creative in all aspects. And what it comes down to, we're all creative people, and... And as long as that we can do whatever we got to do just to create, that that helps us out. Because, you know, this even though it's if we're musicians, you would think that all we do is art. It is so different now. With all the social media, um, people say, oh, yeah, now you can get in front of all these people. But that means more time that you have to sink into each platform to make sure that you're updated and make sure that you have, like, a... A content schedule and all this stuff is streamlined and you have all this planned out it was never like that it, it was never that um, that business oriented oh yeah so it's hard to and then sometimes you have to sit back and go oh yeah that's right we're musicians we create music you know we were doing this and that and we were trying to schedule this out and plan uh, what we're gonna post it's just it gets pretty uh pretty hectic. So like whenever we get the chance to just clean up, create, uh, it's like a relief for us because we just really we love that. We love the moments where we get to just sit around together and and make something. I can imagine. Yes, and uh, what 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 I found out in the videography world is the post production takes about you know two days sometimes. <laughs> Uh, oh. If you're doing anything complex, um, you know, I use uh, DaVinci, which is the new open source editing software, uh, but I think a lot of people use Premiere and uh, Apple's tool, whatever it is, I forgot. But, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's Final Cut. Oh, yeah, Final Cut. A bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah. 
But it's, yeah, we, we, we use the, we use the same thing for our music video, uh, uh, for Suffocate that we did, which is a little bit more like cinematic. Uh, we, we definitely, we used Da Vinci for the most recent one we did for Call Out My Name. We used Premiere. So yeah, we're well vetted with all this stuff. <laughs> That's that's cool though, and then you're able to bring in some income on the side with it too. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it it, it definitely helps. It, it's it's one of those things where you know everyone's got something to film, and uh, it's like I mentioned, you, you get to be creative, so why not make money doing it? Absolutely, your timing is perfect. It's, uh, well, besides the fact that I often forget we're in the end of the world here uh, which is how bummer is sometimes um, <clears throat> is that uh, this is the video age in terms yep. in terms of where money's coming from where it's going to and my brother uh, had been a crew for hire you know uh, yeah that, that does everything including that, including production and hands on the finished product uh, yep. because there's a lot of people that want videos not as many that can make them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a tough thing. It, it, it's not something you just pick up and do. You, you, there's a lot of ins and outs, and there's a lot of little tips and tricks that you got to learn. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not something that you know. That's why a lot of <laughs> a lot of people like other bands will ask us like, "Oh man, you recorded your own video? What what did you do?" And I'm that's like let. A lot of people, like other bands, will ask us, like, "Oh man, you recorded your own video? What, what did you do?" And I'm, that's like, let. Here's uh at minimum so it's definitely pretty tough at times yeah well uh we've been off on a little tangent fans but uh it's always nice to hear uh somebody that's multi-dimensional and uh it does both things well so anyway uh let me get back to Thanks. to the music a little bit and your 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 part in it since we got you on the phone. Um, we'll go out on a limb here and say that you're getting radio play and probably regional support. Does anyone have a tattoo of Never Awake yet? That is funny that you say that because two fans just messaged me the other day and they got they both got uh, tattoos, Never Awake tattoos uh, on their shoulder. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was really cool to see. Uh, we all have, the whole band has um, Never Wake tattoos as well. Um, that's just for the, because, well, when you put your like, 10 plus years of some, you know, something like your life <laughs> yes. into something, you're like, hey, it meant something to me for 10 years. I might as well put it on my body if I'm going to put anything, Yeah, you know. Uh, my, my my cousin always says that he's gonna get some like cran like crazy thing like riding an elephant on his back and when people ask him what it means what he's gonna say I don't know what do you, what do you think it means <laughs> but, but we're like you know uh, might as well put stuff on there yeah so that's so cool we were, though uh, the, but the, the the tattoo idea we were actually on tour with the Beer Union and uh, we were in Fayetteville North Carolina. Okay. And um, we had uh, we had pulled in this campground, and this the guy who owned the campground, like it was like nice, it was okay. Um, later that night, we had well, you know, we, we had went to uh, to Walmart to stock up on stuff, stuff, you know, and we had a Uber take us there. Brings us back at ten o'clock. And the guy who owns the campground just comes out and starts raving at us and starts, like, screaming at us. And we're like, what are you doing, man? Like, we're not even, like, if you want us to be loud, we can be, we can be loud and we can be drunk and belligerent. <laughs> um, and I remember us waking up the next day after that. And we were all, like, angry. We were like, we were like, man, this is one of, like, two days off. 
we were going to have a good day today. What are we going to do? Like, we're bored now. We don't want to, like, make anyone mad. So we just, like, got up. We were like, local tattoo parlor. Let's all get tattoos. So uh, we all got the same uh, NW tattoo. So that is, yep. That's a great story. Uh, did you ever find out what this guy was so pissed about? Uh, I, I, I have a couple theories, but I'm not going to get into them. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't about us, though. I mean, it, it probably had to do with something, his endowment. I don't know. Right. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, so yeah, he's he taking it out on you guys. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to mark that down as a spinal tap moment and uh, uh, ask, uh, first of all, you're, I also like the name. It's very, uh, I, I hate to use the word catchy uh, because I'm not a bit, uh, I'm not one of these, you know, A&R guys. You, know, you guys are the best, baby, you know, the kind yeah. of people, but um, we need more cowbell. Um <laughs> Uh, but but it's it is 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 you know there's a lot of names in the hard rock I guess you could say realm today that are a sentence or multiple words or they are uh, something you can't quite make sense of and it's, occasionally it's nice to just see straightforward naming and and an, a single thought you know it it's funny that you say that because. Um the time that we created the name, we were all sitting around the table and we were like, <sighs> we're looking at all the bands that are coming out at the time. And like, this is when like Devil Wears Prada just came out. And okay. there's a lot of other bands that are coming out that are sounding like the same. Yes. Like large names. And I, I actually, I love Devil Wears Prada, but, but there was like a bunch of other names. There's like Tomorrow's Rejects of, of, of the apocalypse of you know it, it was just like so long and, and a lot of name like long drawn out we we're like dude let's just do one like it's not, it doesn't have to be an actual work but just like one quick to the point and uh you know we we, we chose never wake because we were we were actually analyzing our music at the time we were like what does this sound like we have this weird the stuff we were writing at the moment was like not out there, but it was just like on and on. It had this eerie vibe where like it's kind of like a like a dream that you never never wake up from, and that's what we like stopped right there and we wrote it down. And we we're like never wake there it is. And uh, I remember a lot of people were like <laughs> at the time uh, they were like now listening to viewing your name and then like thinking like oh what is this gonna sound like? I would think you would sound like some Swedish metal band because it was like Nightwish or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, but we were like, no, nah, it's, uh, it's that's metalcore, and we we always look back on the name and we're like, hey, we're proud of that because we we were like, no, we're not going to get with the times and and uh, come up with some crazy name. We're just going to do what we feel is right. So you're actually not going to follow everyone else. You're going to try to do something on your own. That's great. Yeah, I'm being, I'm being sarcastic because we search for those kinds of performers all the time, and that's what we try to zero in on. Uh, because there's so much, uh, so much uh, monomania, I guess, of everything yeah. being very, very similar, almost formulaic at times. Yeah. Uh, in fact, there really was at one point an algorithm for pop music's melody and about two producers left in it. And then they, you could tell which one made which song, you know, that kind of thing. And I know you're not pop music, but... Uh, it, oh, but I know what you mean. Yeah, so... Uh, and it's innovative, uh, yeah. from what I heard here, and uh, I understand there's a, just a slight touch of a progressive element in there. Is that something intended, or did I just mis miscue it, misunderstand it? We we get that from time to time, and we, honestly, we don't know where where it comes from. How we create music is um, everyone's got their own influences. Um, <clears throat> We, you know, we all like certain bands at the same time, but um, everyone's got their favorites. Uh, I like listening to like metalcore. Like I, I, I like Trivium. I like a really big Trivium fan. Um, I grew up 
uh, listening to Disturbed and Godsmack. I was never an OG metalhead. I never was like, oh yeah, I was born and raised in the metal community. I developed into the metal community, uh, so I like things with a lot of melody. Um, George, the bass player, is a huge Slipknot fan. Okay, oh, okay. That's his favorite band. Uh, Marcus is really into, you know, once again, band geek guy. He loves, like, the 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 real technical stuff. Like, he loves, like, periphery and... Holy the, the, shit! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, Justin loves Zach Wilde. Okay, so, from all different angles, we are completely, like, and, and when we all... What, what, what somebody will do is they'll you have an idea for a song, uh -huh. and basically you just we just tell the people like take it and run with it and go as far as you possibly can. If you can finish it, fantastic, we'll, we'll find it. Uh, if you can't, you just bring it to the table, and then somebody usually has an idea and they go, "What about this?" And then that's when the magic happens. That's when everyone goes, "Yeah!" And then you do this, and then you do this, and then you get this whole mixture together of never wake and. Uh, but we, from time to time, people are like, hey, you're kind of proggy and stuff. We're like, it's weird. We, you know, we, we don't, don't really intend on doing that. We just do whatever we do. Yeah. Well, don't consider it an insult. I'm not talking about unicorns and shit. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> very sort of a, a, a advanced sort of willing to use any, you know, you don't seem to have any uh, conventions that you won't try or use. Uh, and then you also have, um, <clears throat> like you said, that uh, element of an overriding sound theme that changes the way you feel into a certain way you've never felt before kind of thing. And, yep. and to be able to do that, of course, is what everyone wants to do anyway. And there's just an otherness to it, you know? Uh, yeah. Maybe pr progressive is the wrong term, but I don't mean like, you know, Five part no, songs I... and you know dragon slot and sword sword and sorcery <laughs> and <laughs> part seven of no I'm kidding anyway that that's a compliment as far as thank I can you say. thank you in fact I think I heard somebody uh, on one of your tracks there's a uh, break not a breakdown but a uh, uh, intermission kind of thing where you where you hear whistling in the wind. Maybe. Honestly, there might be some whistling. Uh, or, or maybe the... this is sound like whistling, like someone whistling, but it's just so perfect where it sits. And it's, oh, yeah. Is there anyone in there? Anybody in... Is it anybody... Is the song... Is there anyone... Anybody in there? Is that the, is that the name type, the title, or have I got it wrong? Well, there's Are You In There. Are You In so, There? Okay. okay. Yeah. Are You In There is definitely... Uh, yeah, that was our like really melodic one that we came out with uh, last year, and we um, really happy with how that one that one went. But are you in there? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of melody in that one. Definitely a lot of uh, a lot of like vocal stacking and layering, and there's definitely probably some like airy ethereal stuff you're hearing. Um, but as far as like limits and like what we use and what we don't use, oh, there is none. If it fits, if it sounds good, put it in there. Uh, it, it's pretty crazy what, what people can get away with, uh, putting in songs. A lot of band, and here's a, here's something that people might not know is, um, <clears throat> next time you're listening to like one of your choruses, like of a song that you like, that's kind of upbeat, listen for the tambourine. You'll be surprised how many times you will find a tambourine in in some of these hard rock and even metal songs. It's just something that people toss in there, and it's like one of those things that it, it targets your subconscious, and you're like, wow, I never noticed that, but that is what's making me like move and like groove is the freaking tambourine in the background. <laughs> wow. So... Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to hear that. Like I've I've heard that in like Demon Hunter songs. I've heard it in even heavier stuff. And Demon Hunter's not really that heavy, but uh, it, it's just it's pretty cool to see that the the stuff that people will throw in their songs. Um, and oh, wow. it's just whatever makes the sound work. Uh, it, it's it's what works. That's what I. 
that's what I used to love about when I grew up and I was listening to, you know, I was a real big Avenged Sevenfold fan at one time. I loved their um, their boldness and, and how they were like, you know what, we're going to put this in the song and, right. uh, and this and this. And it was like all these different stuff. And it was like, now, now that I go back and listen to it, I was like, holy shit, that was great. Yeah. All this stuff in there that was like all these different sounds and, and that's, and that's what I really admired and and that's what it is to be an artist, is to not have limits. You don't want to have yourself boxed in. If you have yourself boxed in, it's hard to escape that. Mm-hmm. You can't do like a middle chord and I've uh, got to scream and, and then have a uh, real catchy chorus. <laughs> you know, you... you Where's you gotta, my chorus? Where's my damn chorus? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you got to do what you got to do and... and, and if you're an artist, you got to create, and you can't limit yourself too much. It, and I understand that uh, limitations are good sometimes, um, but not all the time. Yes, I agree with you so much. Yes, you're, just, you're talking right out of my my hymnal or whatever. I mean, because there <laughs> are there are artists who put limitations on themselves, uh, or they develop them through sort of a dogmatic process, you know. And, uh, you know, suddenly it's like, well, we can't sing straight. Well, this guy over here has perfect pitch. Well, we're not, we can't do that. That's not, you know, we'll alienate everybody. And no, you won't. You bring on new fans. <laughs> you know? one, one of the things that I love, I love when bands break out and they do their thing and they, they you know, whatever fits, fits. And one, one of the, the most recent, I've been lifting a lot lately, so I've been, um, uh, I've been listening to a lot of heavier stuff, but uh, this band over the years, I remember the first song I heard from them, I was like pretty much appalled. I was like, it was White Chapel. Oh and my like, God. Yeah, I was That's like, hard stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, holy hell, this is, this is downright awful. And over the years, I was like, it's it just, it's cool to see where they've gone. And now, like, they came out with their, their latest album. Yeah, uh, that one's a real, real different compared to what you would expect. Yeah, and, uh, and he sings on that album. And I was like, you know what? Good on them. Because, th- like, they have probably pissed off so many people. But they did themselves. And they were like, listen, this is what we're feeling. And this is what we're going to do. And I applaud people for doing that. That is such a... That is, you have no idea how brave that is, because you're really rolling the dice with a lot of fans. But when it comes down to it, it's good for the people themselves. It's good for them themselves to to do what they want to do. You'd be surprised at how many of your favorite artists and your real metal guys are backstage singing Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, I, I, yes, I, I, well, I, I'm not that very surprised because I've interviewed so many, and I used to ask the question, what do you listen to in your spare time? And the weirdest answer I got, I think, was uh, Billy Ocean. Um, <laughs> and it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a really hard, you know, black metal band from, yeah. from, Nor- from the Nordic somewhere. And <clears throat> what's your favorite thing to do? Let's go with walks. I go with walks with my wife, and we have tea. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, it's, it's just kind of like a lot of uh, contrasts in metal, you know? I think that's yeah. part of what it's about, is, 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 is it, it's dramatic, you know? Yep. It's not soft touch, it's like, we're going we're gonna to make you feel something, you know? Yep. And uh, that's, what we, that's what we do, and that's why the fans are so loyal, I think, you know? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, you don't have people in a movement fighting for it, like, you know, like uh, alternative or something, or other forms of music, but genres, whatever you want to call them. I, I yeah. get, you have, but in, in metal, there's a cause almost, you know. Yeah. And there's so, a yeah, and tell yeah, there's even, you know, there's some of the clubs you go to have a uniform, um, you know, like a, a, a jean jacket with no sleeves and tons of patches on it. Or stuff yeah. like that, and what's great is what's great that's happening in the metal genres, metal influences, and hard rock too, 
is there's an explosion of creativity coming out right now um, and it's new and different it's like somebody took uh, you know a honky tonk song and threw in blast beats and and you know <laughs> breakdowns and, and, and but I mean but it sounds like it should have been done you know like it fits in right it fits in the time uh, and so you guys have that the something that you can't describe that you but you know it's there and it's just, just different uh, hey whatever it is I'm good with doing it and uh, you know we're gonna keep doing us and, and hope that people like it all right well uh, let me ask you, I'll ask you a couple more questions, then we'll be done. Uh, really? here, here's this. Did, did you have a time in your life that you remember uh, that was like a, a religious event? Not not religious as you would think of church or something, but a, a, a spiritual, a, a deep, meaningful experience where you suddenly realized that this is what you were going to do for the rest of your life? Um, <clears throat> honestly... Uh, yeah, and it was in the middle of me, um, talking to somebody, because you, I, I don't know if it's like this for other people, but you never really just, like, sit down and go, like, for me, it was, I never really sat down and was like, I'm gonna be a musician, here I am, <laughs> you know, it, it was like, it's just like something that, it was like, bleh, here, that's, now, I'm a musician, it, it, it was like, and it is a surprise to me as it was to other people. Like, you know, you just start fiddling around on the guitar and you just start messing around. And because, like, my dad was a musician, we had instruments around and I'm, you know, screwing around. Uh, and uh, I had some songs and I remember uh, it was like, I can't remember what birthday it was, um, but my dad and mom took me out to the garage and they made me open these big packages. This was my birthday. And uh, I was like, what is this? And they were like, well, these are speakers, and this is an eight-track record, like, boss recorder system. Wow. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that is awesome. I was like, they were like, yeah, now you can record your music and your ideas. So, well, um, were they parents of the year or something? Uh, oh, very much. And, uh, here's the thing. There's always that, like, you know, I guess it's pretty, like, people are like, parents are like, oh, yo, the music's not going to support you. My parents were the complete opposite. They were like, do you want to do music? Like, here you go. Like, here's all, by all means, here's everything you need to, to create. And so supportive. Just amazing, amazing people. Yeah, really. Uh, I would never be where I am without them. And, and I was just, I was so happy when they got that for me. And that was one of the moments where I was like, huh, I'm kind of like a, you know, a musician, but I, I never really called myself that. I was just like, okay, cool. So pretty soon, I mean, a couple of years down the line, that, that hard drive of that system is completely full. I have no more room for songs. Um, and then my dad was like, uh, you know, well, why don't you start, why don't you try to take these and, you know, take four songs and try to take them into the studio. Um, and even then, you know, I still never called myself a musician. And then it wasn't until I was actually, um, geez, this was way further down the line. I was in college and I had, uh, I was actually in a movie at the time. Um, I am number four. And I was on the set, and I was sitting there, and I was bored because uh, doing film work, it's a lot of, like, hurry up and wait, and you're sitting yeah. around the entire time. Cut. So I'm on my laptop, and I'm creating something, like I'm making a, a song, and one of the PAs come up to me, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, and I'm like, oh, I'm just, um, you know, making a song, and they're like, oh, are you a musician? And then I, from the, I swear, this is the point, I was, it was like, pop, I was like, yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm a musician. <laughs> I said it like a couple times because it was like weird to me. But uh, and then from that point on, it was just like cool to embrace and then just make stuff. And uh, it was a really neat part in, in my life. Yeah, that is. 
Yeah, that's a, a interesting phenomenon. You know, there's a lot of social phenomena that is discovered through talking to uh, musicians and specifically in, in the genre you're in. Uh, and about three fourths of the people who have a story like that, they go straight to it. And it's usually the ones that are the most serious that have that story, you know. Some people say, nah, I'm just noodling around here. You know, but I could tell you guys are not. You, you're on a you're on a mission of some sort, uh, and that doesn't mean that you're just like you know, yeah. unibrow guys. It means <laughs> you want to you want to make something of it. You know, yeah, of of the of the creations, and and not just let it be for nobody. Um, <clears throat> and so that's uh, that's a cool thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Do you does your does your collection of uh, you guys are all from Pittsburgh, right? Uh, yeah, from around the Pittsburgh area. Okay. So we are technically from like right outside of Pittsburgh, but now we're even further spread out a little bit. I actually am in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, and uh, the rest of the guys are either in Ohio or Pennsylvania. But it's in the tri-state area, so like everybody can get to each other within like an hour and a half. Right. That's cool. Uh, do you guys have a uniform, unifying, uh, philosophy, ethos, uh, belief system, world view, or anything, or is it just, uh, we accept everyone for who they are and it doesn't matter, or, I mean, you, know, you could be both, actually. You mean, like, religious-wise? Uh, well, that's, that would be one, but you don't have to... It doesn't have to be religious-wise. I, I mean, some people say, "Well, we're uh, we're all about uh, oh uh, making doing everything the best we can, or something like that." You know? Oh well, I mean, well, I mean, I guess you could say like we all everybody was uh, he came grew up uh, either in a Catholic or Christian school. So I mean, when people we've had the people ask us before. Uh, are you a Christian band? And the answer was always no, just because like we're not we're not a Christian band. But if you want to consider us like just Christian dudes in a band, then you could. But we're not perfect. Okay, we're not gonna act like we're gonna be the best examples out there. <laughs> yeah. But at Absolutely. the same time, our music does have a positive message. Uh, we I'm really against. I mean, I deal with mental uh, health issues a lot. Uh, you know, anxiety and depression. Uh, I'm right there, I yeah. I with them a lot. I, I, I'm the same way, yep. And, um... There's nothing worse in the world. If you could pound a nail through your knee and it's not as bad as an anxiety attack. I tell you what, it, it's it's pretty insane on the how... It, it, because people don't know how physical it can be. And a lot of people feel alone out there. It, it's, it's weird because you think... Everybody wants to think they're Superman. And that they're that they can survive anything, okay? And then they are not, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. But until you find out, like, hey, you know, I'm going through this, it's it's weird. Um, and it's something that, like, whenever we, whenever I write music, I like to write how it helps me. And then whenever I see how that helps other people, that makes it even more special. We've had some people tell us, "Uh oh, here we go." Listen, you know, we we you've uh, you've really helped me through my tough times. We had somebody tell us not too long ago on YouTube that uh, uh, they were going to kill themselves. I knew they, it. I'm sorry. I'm music. sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to say that. But that's uh, no, no, no. That's, no. that's okay. got to be the coolest feeling in the world. Uh, even though well, it's, it's a selfless coolest, thing. But at the same time, you realize, wow, we've got some responsibility here. You, know, you don't yeah. really, when you're sitting in your basement and you're making music, you don't really, the last thing that you're thinking is like, I'm going to save someone's life doing this. You're literally just trying to help yourself. And then whenever you realize what it does for other people, then you go, wow, that's, wow. Yeah, yeah but but you think I think about it this way. Uh, you guys are a set of guys who have put your collective spirit into music through inspiration and feeling, which has a life of its own now. 
and yeah. it will, and it's going to cause people to feel a certain way. And if it if it brings them up from being down, my God, that's you know that's the greatest thing a person can do, if you ask me. Uh, of all, one of the things because there's a lot of people, and a lot of life is just pure suffering. And, and if you're able to help someone that's at the end of the rope or doing time in the gutter and tell believe me everyone does some of that time they just if they tell you they don't they're lying um oh yeah and i mean we we we've we've definitely gotten that from people and i always used to say like whenever i create music i remember growing up you know i remember going through my angsty times and going through like even more the more angsty times like events sevenfold and stuff and i remember listening to them and they helped get me through times and i was always like enamored by some of their songs and I was like, you know, I wish that I could do something. I wish I could create something that makes other people feel the way I feel about this right now. And uh, to mm -hmm. find out that we have done that in some way or another is pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, it is great. And, and it is a, with that, the, there's a common thread with fans that become household names that have, always have, have a story like that. Um, and I was like, kind of wait for it. Here it comes. I was thinking you were going to say that, uh, but yeah. I wasn't going to ask you the question. Just uh, script it out, but see if it came out. That's that's really cool. Uh, so you got a great set of tunes. You're on the radio. Uh, I haven't heard a bad track uh, personally. <clears throat> uh, it's real strong, and you guys sound like uh, you know each of you sounds like a, a savant on on his instrument. Especially, <laughs> and so, some of the some of the guitar work is just really intense and so cool. Thank um, you. And uh, and then uh, the way you you cho choreograph your different vocal styles and the diversity of them and that kind of thing, the whole thing just comes together in this package that is not what everyone else is doing, but it might have some of the elements of what other people are doing. It feels great. Right. It's just a great, great, great feeling. So, um, I believe you guys are going to have a, a nice career in front of you. And I, oh, I, I, you. I'm never wrong. No, I'm kidding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. I'll hold you to it. If, you, if you've got uh, what's happening, you have tattoos, people are putting ink on themselves for life. Uh, yeah. And that's a lifelong advertisement, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, and you've got airplay. That's so. In today's world, that's just about impossible to get. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, people. The, the radio may play your music, but to, to actually get it to happen, to make, to be the impetus of it, that's that's really hard. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a road. It's it's been a rough road, but. Uh, we're on the way, and that's what you got to do. You just got to keep moving along and do what you love. There you go. Well, listen, hey, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for sharing all the things you did about your band and uh, and 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 the uh, the way you write music and how you feel about things. And that's what fans love to hear. And uh, sure. so. If you don't have anything else, I, uh, we'll close. We'll end up and uh, get on down the road. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else in the future, just uh, you know, we'll, we'll send it on over. I'll say the same thing to you. If you got a publicity stunt, an idea, anything you want, I'll give it to you. But here's, sure. the, I, I am going to do the the uh, the uh, interview, and it goes up on a Thursday usually. That's the mm -hmm. best day of the week. It'll be a feature item above the scroll, and it will be uh, uh, on our TV thing as well. Uh, awesome. And uh, so <clears throat> that could happen that the Thursday after this. Do you have any d d uh, specific dates that work for you that you would like to use, like a, a drop date or a uh, you know uh, some kind of first thing happening date? I guess. Sometimes people like to time out. The... Um, honestly, it, it's whenever you're you're available. So, okay. You know, whenever you you feels right, we're we're good. Yeah, I'd like to put it on a Thursday because, as, for whatever reason, our statistics all point to that being the highest traffic. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, maybe it's because people are in a good mood because tomorrow's Friday. But uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway, uh, that's when it'll come out, and uh, I usually I usually send it over for review before I put it out there to make sure it doesn't misrepresent anything or I have not I'm not cite it's not citable information. And then we put it up and it goes out. Right on. And we we appreciate you uh, you know taking the time to talk to us here. Especially yeah. in, in view of, you know, this a uh, weird yeah. situation we're in. It's uh it could be very uh, Limiting at times. Well, it is very limiting. Basically, hard to believe we're actually even maintaining. Yeah. I hope. It's yeah, it's it is it's definitely insane, and it's it's tough on the mental health. That's for sure. You yeah. know, you got <laughs> been, you got to prop yourself up, man, or you're gonna be you will fall into that hole. I just told my fiance uh, yesterday. I was like, listen. We're going on walks every day, okay? Just because it's not it's not physical, it's mental. We got to get the hell out of here, and we've got to we've got to prop ourselves up somehow. <laughs> so yeah, well that's cool. I actually considered moving into a remote part of the country and camping for a year. Uh, <laughs> how's that for crazy? And then just coming back to civilization and seeing what it looks like. Is it warlords and craziness, or is it? all back to normal or what is it oh yeah it's uh but i think we're well, going to get through i think we're going to get through it um i think uh it's, you know we are resilient people and everything we've gone through in life there's been worse things that happened to the world than this and, right and they're just history now you know so right if, if anything you know we all I feel like when this is all over, everyone needs to get together, and there needs to be like a, a celebration. If not, you know, isn't this how like holidays are created or something? We need to have a day yes, where yes. everyone's like, "Hey, that's over. That sucked a lot. Let's celebrate that not being here anymore." <laughs> that's a, yes, that that would be perfect uh, for a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, Johnny. Thank you again. And if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, uh, I, I can't think of anything else, but again, thanks for your time. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Good day. You made, you made, by your pride, you